Greetings you space cadets. Welcome back to the next episode of Outer Wilds. You will notice we have Echoes of the Eye, courtesy of Lepsis Magna. Thank you, Lepsis, as always, for sending that our way. That being said, let's go ahead and we do resume expedition, right? I think so. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends. It's been a long time for me, maybe mere seconds for you, if you were happen to be binge-watching this sometime in the future. I took about a five-month hiatus. Five months, not a short amount of time. Partly because I was getting uh, a little... I, I would say I was struggling to figure out some of these last puzzles, but more so the delay was caused by a medical reason, nothing major, but it turns out that I'm one of the lovely 40% of Americans who suffer, in one degree or another, from GERD, which is just a fancy word for gastric acid reflux disease, gastric why is it gastric acid if it's an E? GERD? Is it G-E-R-D? But that... Last time I checked, acid isn't spelled with an E. Anyway. Uh, and that was messing up my throat. Making it difficult for me to speak for long periods of time. However... Given a large amount of time in between... Having that problem, and now I've kind of come to terms with just dealing with it. We're getting a lot of lag here. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out if that's just normal outer wilds. I think I even said that in the first episode. I said that the controls were floaty. If you hear jingling, that's just the cat, as always. Alright, so five months five months we can we can do this right oh gosh oh that's right we found the chick the lady uh i met a living nomai named Salanum at the south pole the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon at this location the quantum moon becomes a reflection of the eye itself what at this location the quantum moon becomes a reflection of the eye itself don't remember that but all right the eye is likely the source of all macroscopic quantum phenomena in the solar system. Solanum wonders what would happen if a conscious observer were to enter the eye. That's right, we had to communicate with Solanum via our translation device because, of course, we can't actually speak Nomai, nor can we understand it in its native writings. We must rely on the translator. That being said, it didn't look like we really got any other information we've got this whole thing off on its own which has always bothered me but all the other webs within webs within webs have connected well crikey we actually even finished all the quantum moon nonsense but why is this over here it bothers me that that's not connected to anything anyway I believe Lepsis said, though, that we were at pretty much the end of the game, and that if we were going to do the DLC, now was the time, I believe were his actual words. I'm hitting all the buttons. How do I, how do I exit this menu? <laughs> I can't leave. I just want to leave. Um, zoom, control, map mode. I, I just... Oh, I don't know why that happened, but okay. I just want to leave. There we go. Alright, let's go. Let's actually check. Do we have... No? All the graphics are turned down to terrible. Water quality should probably be a little lower. Yeah, I guess this is fine. The, um... Mic keeps needing to be buffered. It's probably just normal issues oh wait right but if we're gonna go do the dlc we need to go to the museum i've heard i wouldn't actually know well i mean we have the ship why not land on the museum hey 
Oh. Well, close enough. Why the devil? It is definitely... Hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, as far as I can tell, everything is closed and, uh, these are the normal settings, so we'll just... This is our life now. I'm gonna play the game like this. Okay. I feel like there was an NPC somewhere. Is that our ship? Wait, we parked... That's hilarious. We parked, um... In the quantum location. Yeah, here's our NPCs. Who's this guy? Hornfells. I feel like that guy was important. Hey, look at this. Statue opened its eyes. Bet you wish you'd seen this happen, huh? Uh, me too. I'm not even a little closer to understanding what's going on with this statue. Was there something you needed? I found Feldspar. You found Feldspar? And they're in the dark bramble? Stars above. This is wonderful news. Thank you. Thank you for finding them. That Feldspar didn't immediately join you on your ship and return here is incredibly Feldspar of them. We were never entirely sure what Feldspar was thinking back then, either. Still, we ought to fish them out of that dreadful place with all haste. I'll radio Gossen and have them prepare a ship. It really should be Gossen who brings Fel Feldspar home. Again, thank you. You can hardly imagine how profoundly happy I am to hear they're alive and unharmed. Where are the other travelers? I think we already checked that one. Hal, I think, was our rocket buddy. So, what's the... what the... oh yeah. We know what this is now. It's no longer a novelty. Okay, but being on the ground would be a great novelty. It's amazing how much of this means something now. Actually, let's just kind of... Let, let, let's start over. Let's go into the entrance. We'll do a, a, a full sweep of the museum since we really haven't been here since... I think we went here one other time to try and solve a puzzle, but it ended up not being the answer. Alright, so we know all these people now. We've met them. More or less. Hornfells is over there. Feldspar, of course, is, uh... Actually, I don't really... S it's difficult to tell them apart here. Gazan Ex Esker Sleet. Oh, clockwise, from top to left, Hornfells, Gazan Sleet, and Feldspar. Who's Esker? Must have been the person taking the photo. Ah... Uh... Okay. At a wild adventure, Timber Hearth's first and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth, later made the first of what would be many landings on the moon. I suppose we don't really need to read everything. We can kind of just quickly look at things. Well, that's the symbol for the eye, right? We're nearly ready. Felix and I have been finished construction. She says calibrating the device won't take long. Fortunately, the Outer Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally resume our search. Of course, that's one of those Happy Meal boxes. Actually, I kind of want to read this one. What does this have to say about it? Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how, did, how and why did they come here? 
These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xeno archaeological archaeological expeditions. Because we have the Nomai skeleton, plenty of those around. The probe, gravity, crystals. Uh, where is this? Brittle Hollow? No, that's wrong. Where is this? Crystal is taking. Oh no, it is Brittle Hollow. I thought Brittle Hollow's ground was purple. That looks almost red. We've got. What are these? What are these? Can't bump into them. Oh, I see. It's the stages of the sun, right? What is this? Wait, new exhibit? The radio tower here on Timber Hearth was built to receive transmissions from our deep space satellite, and to this day still houses the first ever photos taken of the entire solar system. These photos were made possible by the deep space satellite's unusual vertical orbit that carries it high above and below the plane of the, the solar system. Thanks to a recent upgrade, the deep space satellite is now responsible for generating the real-time solar system map used by our newest astronauts. Oh, okay, so that's why our map, this one, like, um, tells us where the quantum moon is, and it changes to update. So, what do they call this? Transmissions from Deep Space Satellite. Unusual Vertical Orbit. So there's an actual reason why you have this map. Whoa, what is this? Are these all the planets? They do appear to be. What's up there? Nothing. Nothing. Half expected to see Pickleby up there. You know, for a museum, someone should clear the desk here. Unless seems to be some kind of radio tower perhaps they're using to attempt to contact the outside world or the outside world other solar systems have a lot of flagons of something I'm not really sure what do the Nomai drink not Nomai what do the Harthians drink we know they eat marshmallows we can't interact with any of this so this must not be what we need to do Hmm, this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. But if that's true, everything was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Hornfell's observations. This is incredible. At first, I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but they're not. They're galaxies, and this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. I think I need to sit down. I know I mentioned this at some other point. Actually, I might have mentioned it five months ago in the last episode. The concept of... If life takes X number of years to begin, then where's all the other life? Considering the Earth or the Sol solar system is not particularly old compared to some. Okay, I'm running out of things to do at the museum. What's the... 
DLC called Echoes of the something or another. I hate you, Lanternfish. I hate you the most. Ah! Mess up your science experiment. Yeah, I think we can succinctly say we've seen everything here. That's okay. A walk around hearth really isn't the worst thing in the world. I was quite amused that I put on a playlist that I've listened to several times before. Uh, so I put this list on recently, realized that um, three of the songs were from Outer Wilds. Funnily enough, one of them was the The Sun Is Going To Explode song. And it was supposed to be a calming, relaxing playlist. But when I heard that song, I panicked. I was like, oh no. The sun's gonna explode. As amusing as that it is, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Okay, how do I get out of here? Seems to be a common problem. I just want to leave. There we go. Echoes of the Eye. I mean, that doesn't give us much of a clue as to what we need to do. And that kid is very obsessed with throwing rocks into the ghost matter. Ah, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch. That's lucky. Any good sounds from space today? Yeah. Hmm. I suppose we could go into this geyser. See if there's anything cool down here. Although I feel like we've been down here before. Appears to be an assortment of things that people have lost. Sardines? Okay, I don't care what anybody says. Sardines are great. People are like, sardines get this bad rap. Probably because of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, anchovies on pizza, which are basically the same thing. They do taste a bit different. I prefer sardines. Yeah, next time you're in the store, just do it on a whim. Buy a can of sardines. More's the merrier if they're preserved in, like, a mustard. And eat the whole thing. Don't worry about it. Their bones aren't going to kill you. Okay, there's nothing for us to do here. Now I really want sardines. It's probably been... Oh, I guess we can go this way. It's probably been like, um, gosh, I used to buy them when I was working as a wee baby retailer. Retailer. Um, cashier. 
trying to get through college. So it's probably been about 10 years. No, it hasn't been 10 years since college, has it? It's crazy talk. Let's get out of here. I don't think we're gaining anything by going through these. Geysers. Okay, so Lepsis said to go to the museum. Maybe the implication was the go part. Maybe, um... Maybe I should have walked. Maybe we need to run into someone on the way up to the museum. <laughs> it's like Dark Souls. You buy the DLC and you just have no idea how to access it. Alright, we'll just keep going up. I thought I might have seen... I thought I might have seen someone, uh... On the roof of the museum. I feel like we're going the wrong way. Yeah. Can't we lower this? I thought we could. We're stuck. I thought I saw someone out here. Might have just been seeing things, though. Must have been. Or it was a different roof. Was it this roof? I suppose we might need fuel soon. Not that I really mind being on Timber Hearth for the day. I feel like for the planet that is our origin, we spend precious little time here. I don't think these people say anything new. It's probably better that we spend a little time allowing me to become reacclimated anyway.
Well, kind of the only thing I can think is what? Do we need to like quantum entangle ourselves with this rock? It's too small. Oh, well, it's also not dark. So we wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Wait. What? Radio tower. Hmm. Did we ever find a radio tower on Timber Hearth? I don't remember seeing one. Well, that's now our goal. We're going to find that radio tower. You win again, physics. Or the sun. Okay, I think I think we should go take a picture of that picture. And then see if we can can't find the radio tower on Timber Hearth. It might be nothing, but if it is nothing, we can at least eliminate it as a something from the nothing. No, wait. No, that doesn't work. We can eliminate it as a possible something into nothing. Don't mind me, I'm qualified to do this. This is a an authorized landing. Feldspar gave us permission. Okay. So it should be fairly easy to find, right? I mean, it's like a... That's a good picture. It's, it's a satellite. I have to keep this picture because the moment I stop looking at it, um, I won't be able to see it anymore. Maybe my brain is a quantum brain. <laughs> no. No, it's probably very much the opposite of a quantum brain. I think a quantum brain would be a brain capable of keeping all possible realities in it in its mind at any given moment, aka a quantum computer. Um, okay, I need that picture again. How do we get it? Why? No. No! It won't let us keep the picture. Okay, well, um, I remember it had a satellite dish. We'll just look for something with a satellite dish. A tiny one on top of a tower. <sighs> if I would have known we couldn't keep the picture. I would have tried to memorize some of the things around it. Does anyone... Does, does anyone in Hearth tell us where it is? I doubt it would be in a cave. 
That just seems objectively wrong. Okay, let's go back and look at that picture. Unless... If we, um... Let's show it here. No. We don't need feet. Okay. Yeah, it seems... There's not really a lot around it. I would guess that it's on the surface, not on a mountain. It's not surrounded by trees, but potentially there are trees at least somewhere nearby it. Although, Timber Hearth has no lack of trees. Ah, that's right. We can use the little icon there on the left that just disappeared. Never mind, we can't use the little icon on the left to track where we've been on the planet. It definitely does disappear once you get into the ship. Well, this is a pretty good view of the planet. Oh, wait, there it is! I don't remember seeing this before. I don't remember investigating a radio tower. I feel like we would have. So, this, like, has to be the DLC, right? Surely. Unidentified signal nearby. What do we got here? Oh. Spooky. Let's forget this thing can zoom in. <laughs> Just checking out your radio tower. Nothing weird about us checking out your radio tower. I wish I could read that. What does that say? Obsession? No. I don't know what it says. I want to know what the Harthians drink. Besides water. Satellite angle, 248 degrees. Cool. Oh, hey, space guy. Is that the space guy? I think if you flip it upside down, it's a person. Maybe. Probably. Satellite angle 40 degrees. Ah, don't talk about degrees. I failed trigonometry. Which I know doesn't necessarily mean you were doing degrees. What is degrees? What would degrees be? Physics? I didn't fail trigonometry. I just got a C. It wasn't very good. Oh, <laughs> there's a recording right here, and we're recording. Ahem. It's been about two days since the launch of the Deep Space Satellite, and I'm about to view the first batch of photos. Let the record show that on this historic day, Outer Wilds Venture has... Ah, they're printing, they're printing. Here they come. Stars above, will you look at that? There's Brittle Hollow, and look, look, there. That's Hollow's Lantern, and there's Giant's Deep, and the Quantum Moon... I'm speechless. Completely speechless. For a guy who's speechless, he sure does talk a lot. 
Every single astral body in our magnificent solar system, looking stunning from every angle in each of these three images. And in color, no less. Now this is art. I could stare at these photos forever. Doesn't Timber Hearth look tiny from... Hold on. What is that? Well, that can't be right. That's... I mean, that's not even possible. Am I interpreting this photo correctly? What's even stranger is it doesn't show up on either of our... Either of the other photos. Just this one. Well, there must have been an equipment malfunction, I suppose. Only sensible explanation for it. I'll radio Gabbro and ask them to go examine the satellite's lens for defects. That must have been when Gabbro was investigating the satellite's lens for defects. Wasn't Gabbro, like, at the museum? So we know nothing ill became of him. I've heard, although I haven't spoiled anything for myself other than the topic, I have heard the DLC is spooky. Oh, wait, of course. We need to figure out which of these photos has something that the other one doesn't. Well, logically speaking, he said... What did he say here? It's not possible. I might have... What's even stranger, it doesn't show up in either of the other photos, just this one. Oh, he doesn't say three. So, um... Never mind, I guess maybe all three were printed. Well, you wouldn't say each of the others unless there were at least two others. And let's assume this one was printed last, so it's not important. So, wait. Unless this was the one with something that appeared. Now, this is clearly Gabbro repairing things. Let's look at the other pictures. So there's... The interloper, the twins, the um, brittle hollow, and... No, that's not helpful. Brittle hollow and probably... No, that's brittle hollow. This is timber hearth. The moon, adol rock, and the quantum moon. Um, except the quantum moon is also over here. Unless that's just a piece of... Like, that's the quantum moon, right? But that's also the quantum moon. Which I suppose... Well, no, it shouldn't be in two places at once in a single picture. That's, uh, the lantern. Giant steep. And the cracked seed. Uh, we have an eclipse of some sort. So what do we have? We have, um, the deep. Probably the quantum moon again. A lantern, some planet and another planet causing an eclipse. Probably timber hearth and Adel rock. The lantern, brittle, Pluto, and, um, Pluto, <laughs> the interloper. And, uh, why can't I remember the Cracked Seed planet? Brittle? No. Evil planet. That's what we're calling it. Giant Steep. Probably Timber Hearth. Uh, big planet? Hmm. Twins. Quantum Moon. Interloper. Seed planet. Ah, what planet is that? Satellite angle 40%. Can we adjust the satellite angle? Oh, we have the radio tower now in our frequency. Deep space was a terrible season. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't even have a right to say that. 
I'm not a big Trekkie fan, but like many non-Trekkie fans, I have seen a lot of Star Trek. And I know a lot of people, there's nothing actually wrong with... Oh, no, wait, Deep Space this is the one with Cisco. I'm thinking of the one with um, the really stern lady, Voyager. I'm all for having a female captain. I honestly just didn't like Janeway as a character. She was no fun. Okay. Let's, uh... I, I guess we can maybe use this frequency to find something in space? That's how these things work, right? Alright, let's get our stethoscope up. One of these buttons will do it. There we go. Deep space radio. Here, here we are. Let's find. Let's go find the deep space. <laughs> if I would stop putting it away. Okay, there's the satellite. We already know that one. We just want to find the other signal. The other signal. Oh, this one. Here we go. Here? What? Maybe? No? Ah, there we are. Let's just go in a that away direction. Wait. Nope. So confusing. It almost seems like it's that, uh... Blinking red light of sorts. There we go. I've completely forgotten how to pilot. It's okay, it's 17 kilometers away, right? Are we fixing this? Yes, slowly we're fixing this. So, are we... Traveling towards a satellite of sorts? Also, what's that off in the distance? Probably nothing important. So, they did say they launched that um, satellite probe or whatever with its weird vertical orbit allowing it to get sweet pictures of something or another also how did we see this little blinking light from so far away it's difficult to guess the scope of it we're getting so close to it but it doesn't actually seem like we're getting any closer oh no oh, no no we are all right, is this... This must be our... What's it called? Satellite picture taker thingy. Oh, stop that. So that must be why they said they were going to have one of the people go out and take a look at the lens to make sure it was functioning properly, because... You can actually do that. It's not so far away that they couldn't just take one of these ships out and take a look. I've lost it. Oh, there it is. It says it's unknown, but there, there we go. Deep Space Sunline. Well, I mean, what do we got here? Oh, we have a recording. 
Gabbro here, checking in on the Deep Space Satellite per Ground Control's request to check out a possible equipment malfunction. See, Hornfells, I do too work. Oh no, we've irrevocably changed the trajectory of the satellite, and now it's going to be... No, the the um, rotation... What rotation? Um, orbit! It's ruined! What have I done? You know, I wouldn't mind being a satellite. It's peaceful out here, among the distant stars and the soft velvety darkness, but it's yawn. Awfully nice for naps, too. Oh, right. The lens. All right, little satellite. Let's see what the trouble is. Hmm. Everything looks A-OK. -okay. Ground control. No dust or scratches on the lens and no evidence of sparking or violent explosions. Guess that rules out an equipment malfunction, after all. Hear that, pal? You're in great shape. Keep up the good work out here. All right. So, unsurprisingly, the device was not malfunctioning. And whatever we saw in the photo was real. Wait. So we need to be here at the point when it's at the correct angle, of which I don't remember what that angle was. I think it was less than 297. Is this thing still moving? Is it moving our ship? I don't know. Can we interact with it? Meh. Yeah. Without Knowing the exact angle we need to wait. This seems kind of moot. So let's go ahead and meditate. That'll get us back to the museum. We'll make a quick hop skip to the satellite. And from there, we can hopefully find whatever the satellite was looking at at the correct angle. Oh, right. The exploding probe launcher. We'll have to go figure that out at some time. The final mystery. Okay, so it seemed pretty... to work pretty well when we just zoomed out like this. Oh, there it is. So we correctly guessed most of the pieces there. That was Gabbro in that last picture. Unsurprisingly, the defect is our clue. Okay, it's 40 degrees? 40 degrees. 40 degrees, let's go check that out. Maybe, if we're lucky. What the heck is that? What was that? Was that it? I don't know, man. Oh, right. Gravity. Let us once again utilize the deep space radio. And we'll, uh... Maybe if we're really lucky, we'll get there before 40 degrees.
No, per the norm. We've overshot it. It's just so tiny. For a second there, I thought we forgot to put on the spacesuit. Well, hold up. Oh. What the devil? Doesn't even make sense. What? What is that thing? Wait, what? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Can we... Is there a cloaked planet in the solar system? No, oh, where's the sun? Alright. I think it was about in that direction. But I definitely don't see it now. I think we need to be a little bit faster. We could wait for another 40 degree uh, rotation, but that feels like it would take forever. Okay, this time we're gonna get it. To be fair, last time we had to go to the radio tower first. Which slowed us down. Oh, right. We need the actual correct frequency. This time we'll put on the brakes... I don't know. Maybe now? I feel like we made way better time this time. Oh, but I'm still gonna overshoot it. No! Again, thought we didn't put on the spacesuit. It's good to know the muscle memory is keeping us safe. Okay, so we're at 12 degrees now. So we should have plenty of time to sit back and see what the heck 
the satellite is seeing. And when we see it, we'll just make a mad dash for it. So it can't be Giant's Deep, because Giant's Deep is up there, and I know we saw Giant's Deep in the photo, so it's not like there could be two, but like, it's the only planet that I could think of that would be big enough to cause that much of an eclipse. Whoa, what? You can just see the sun station rotating around. It's right there. Oh, there it is. All right. So chances of us crashing headfirst into an invisible planet seems kind of likely, but we don't know what this thing is, so. I guess we can gauge our distance to the sun, unless we can track... We can't track it. It's like a giant shadow. Oh, we're getting closer. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. We're gonna crash into something physical. Oh, we didn't. Oh, it's very dark in here. It is very dark. Oh, good! I was wondering when the Super Metroid crossover was going to be in this game. Huh. What is that terrifying noise? Some sort of hissing. One would potentially guess it was part of the music, except for the fact that... I heard it in stereo. The hissing, that is, not the music. The, um, the hissing seemed to be coming from below us, and as I was rotating the ship, the hissing changed directions depending on where the bottom of the... I'm assuming this is the bottom. Oh! I assume this is the bottom because there's gravity. I just had a moment of... Wait, there is no bottom, except that there is because... We're being slowly dragged towards the bottom of this. Sort of? Yes. Very subtly. Or the planet doesn't have gravity and it's just moving. Actually, I think it's more likely that. So I guess there's still no up. Oh. We don't need landing gear. As we've said multiple times, and I believe Feldspar had said, landing gear is optional. So suppose we have no recourse but to simply drive through this... I mean, we're like practically immortal anyway, right? What's the worst could happen? Whoa! I don't like... I don't... Oh dear. I don't like that. I don't... Oh, gosh. I don't like any of this. I just want, I just want to go somewhere where I have an up again. Thank goodness we have an up. Okay, so we need our suit to breathe. This seems to be some sort of sci-fi-esque, uh, what do they call these, like shield walls or something? It's usually how it works in Star Wars. So we have gravity while we're behind the shield wall. 
These appear to be stereotypical alien spacecrafts in the fashion of an UFO. There's several of them. Gravity is a little strong here. 1.3. I can feel it. One, two, three, four. Four ships. Five counting ours. Well, it's not like anyone is inviting us, so let us let ourselves in, shall we? Error. Unknown language. It's a light activated. Every time I turn the flashlight on, it does things. I think we just ended up back the way we came. There appears to be a door on the other side. Do we simply shine the light at it? Hmm. Seems that there is a moment when our light hits neither of these spinny things. So is it about finding the sweet spot? Wait, what happened? Well, we have trees. That's nice. So I have to assume an alien race that uses light not to see, but to simply activate their machinery must be a race that does not need light to function or to see. Um, huh? What? Which way is up? Oh, we're standing. I think. Where did we come from? We rotated a thing. Wait. Ah, oh, right. We can use our light switch to uh, steer. Oh, this is driving me nuts. I'm actually getting a little dizzy. Where are we? We're in a halo ring. Wait, what? Well, if you insist, sure, we'll just get off there. Oh, okay, now I see what happened. You just rotate this and it drops the thing down below and you just kind of go about your way. Well, this place is awesome. Check this out. 
I don't know what any of this is, but holy crap, this is cool. So it seems we're in some sort of, well, I am woefully lacking in sci-fi knowledge and, uh, well, science in general, but it seems we're in a cylindrical device that is camouflaged by reflecting light? Refracting light? And a very large fan, which I can only assume keeps what? Oh, is that? That looks like the uh, Brittle Hollow, sort of, I think. A fan that keeps the air from stagnating? Oh wait, there's air here, period. I just realized that's actually kind of meaningful. There do appear to be plants, although they seem to be kind of worse for wear. A little brown and scraggly. They don't seem to be doing very well. I mean, they're technically alive. Probably not very much nutrients in an isolated environment like what the crap was that what just happened oh it comes to my attention that we should probably move but then again okay that was a thing A giant tidal wave. There's our boats. Looks like a dam broke or something, or a bridge. What on earth is this thing? It's beyond fascinating. Let's see if we can get a better vantage point. Curse you, 1.3 gravity. No, please don't carry me underwater. I don't want to be underwater. Okay. So... Back to where we were before the dam broke. There does technically appear to be vegetation. It is only just thriving. There's almost a landing pad of sorts over there. And what else can we conclude? My observation that it is a species that functions without light is probably wrong because this whole environment is lit up. Artificially, it would have seemed at that. Maybe this was a botanarium? I doubt they intended the bridge to break because of a tidal, tidal wave, so... Maybe their original goal was to cultivate plants in this thing. It's not Nomai, or at least if it's Nomai, it's not an offshoot of Nomai that we are familiar with because we can't read their language. The gravity does indeed seem to maintain a 1.3... caliber regardless of where we are on the planet. I can't even call this a planet. I feel like I need to call it something else. Um, facility? Ugh. It's so confusing. There's no up or down or anything. Gosh, that freaks me out.
Okay, so we there nothing is hidden from us. Because whilst I walk around as if it's going to get me somewhere that we might not have seen before, we can see everything. We can see the entire planet just by looking up. So, what have we got? Uh, another broken bridge. Are those houses? Yeah, houses of sorts. Was that where we were picked up? No. A landing pad? With circuitry. Another house. That actually looks kind of like where we should go. Since... Our grav... Gravitical limitation? Is that a phrase? Our gra um, The limitations of being confined by gravity won't prevent us from going down. Uh, some sort of archways? Another house? Docks? The broken bridge? Okay, so let's go jump into the water. Theoretically, it could be rather shallow water. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's way less spooky. I don't really mind being in the water then. It is very shallow. It's just, it's like churning around the ring. That's what we'll call this for now. We'll call it the ring. Until I get a better name. Oh, right. I come over here as if I'm going to be able to read that. Oh no. Oh no. What is this? What is. Th we don't need another alien race lost in this solar system because they were looking for the eye of the universe. What is this? The brain of the universe? Gah. Apparently, they use a similar combustion fuel because it fits our jet jetpack. We were clearly meant to come down here, though, as one of the first things we did. Everything was pulling us in this direction as a first-time visitor. The fact that the water broke our mode of transportation, um, the fact that this is all the way down here, it's very easy to access. They wanted us, the developers wanted us to see that this race was looking for something that seems to be like the eye. Plus the jetpack uh, fuel here. Okay. Well. Uh, I guess these still function. And whether or not the dam burst and flooded everything doesn't change the fact that the water is still shallow and still simply a cylinder. Oh, that's lightning. Okay, I don't know why that was lightning. Maybe... Maybe the lightning prevents us from traveling here on foot. Or, on foot. More like swimming here? Oh dear. Right, right. I need to turn the light bulb off. If, uh... If we want to stop. Uh-oh. Sounds like our time's up. Hey, right, well, let's just do a real quick, uh... Kinda like, uh, surf... Through here. A lot of houses. We saw these houses. Oh, th these are the two archways that we saw. Another dock, some strange chained figure. trees. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see 
what's inside these buildings next time. Oh, what's that? Oops. It seemed like a red light. Oh, that was the sun. I bet. We seem to be able to get a peek. Oh. Can we not? Is this... Oh, we can't move any further. Red, blue, and green. Is this what... Is this the... Uh... The hollow what am I trying to say? The camouflage? Why aren't we dead? Shouldn't the sun have exploded? Oh there it is. It's just taking its sweet time to get here. It's soundproof. There's no sound from the out what the A lot going on there, a lot to explore and discover. That was really cool. Like, wow. I mean, I know it's not uncommon to make DLC very interesting so that it entices people to go out and see what it is, but seriously, that was really neat. Um, yeah, we're going to have to cut it off there for the episode, but I'm pretty excited to see what the heck that was and uh explore further what was a really neat area anyway as always my friends thank you for watching what what oh wait what 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 no i was going to tell you about using the ship log to set destination markers for locations you visited before it's a brilliant feature if i do say so myself dead useful and the risk it p poses of shortening out the fuel regulator and causing the ship to explode is so minim minimal that only Gozen would worry about it. Uh, so how do I use it? When you're on your ship, open up its log and to the location you want to mark anywhere is fine as long as you've been there at least once. Hop in the pilot seat and the ship will throw up a destination marker on your display. It's that easy. Wow, Slate, how do you come up with these ideas? Oh, I do the best with what I've got. Really, you're too kind. That's not what my voice sounds like. Everyone's a critic. Anyway, I've got a fire to enjoy, and you've got a launch code to grab. Go wild with the marking feature while you're out there. Just uh, try not to follow it so directly you fly into the sun, okay? That was weird. I don't know why he's said all that. Anyway. But yeah, as always, my friends, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one where we continue to explore the ring. TM. Till we get a better name. Bye.